The Bishop of Broome needs a lawyer. That's because the Bishop of Broome hid in plain sight while allegedly preying on young Aboriginal men. Christopher Saunders groomed or sexually abused up to 71 of them by getting them drunk or bribing them with cash, phone credits, plane and bus fares and hotel rooms. His catalogue of sins is detailed in a 200-page report compiled by former police officers commissioned by the Vatican to investigate the now 73-year-old. Many of the 102 witnesses, 30 of whom were formally interviewed, said Saunders was known as a sexual predator. The Vatican investigation concluded that he assaulted at least four people and was keeping a further 67 as warm prospects. His reign of sexual coercion lasted 50 years and likely began when he was a newly ordained priest working in Clavelli in Sydney's affluent eastern suburbs. That's a long time to go unnoticed. A man like that doesn't get to use church funds to abuse that many victims without many people having a good idea that something's not right. He did it for half a century. When he was in the Kimberley, he was spending between 3000 and 4000 bucks a week on booze for his victims. He bought guns, a $70,000 boat, several cars, and had 80 grand in cash in the Chancery safe. How is none of that picked up by the church's finance committee? He was filling a church plane with Hessian sacks full of Jim Beam and Coke and delivering the grog to dry communities. Someone bought the piss. Someone loaded the cargo hold. Someone flew the plane. How did they not say anything? He had five bank accounts, which at one stage held $3 million. How is that not red flagged by anyone? But no police arrest. The cops investigated, but couldn't stack it up because witnesses were reluctant to speak. When someone's giving you free coercive booze, some people are reluctant to turn the tap off. Saunders stood down in 2020 when news of the police investigation went public. A year later, the cops said no charges would be laid, which was a blessing for Chris because there are a lot of Aboriginal men in jail, many of whom are victims of child sex abuse at the hands of men like the good Bishop of Broome, and few of whom would have shown the Christian value of forgiveness should they have chanced upon the clergyman behind the razor wire. So no charges, but the Vatican clearly still smells a rat. Ordered its own inquiry, and now it's up to the Pope to decide what to do. Bishops are ordained by and can be defrocked by one man and one man only. The Vatican is now facing two big questions. Will the Pope prevail in the next Rocky film? And how hard do they chase the full extent of the Bishop of Broome's misdeeds? Because he clearly had a circle of enablers that protected him for decades. Another headache for Tim Costello. The Archbishop's in a bind with this one. He's the head of the Catholic Church in WA, but actually has bugger all control over what happens when a bishop goes rogue, because said bishop answers to a higher authority. So Costello is reduced to a bit of hand-wringing. He's got no nuclear option. That feels like a segue. We haven't had a proper nuclear debate in this country for years, so we're due. Peter Dutton reckons it's bullshit to say we can ever build enough solar panels and wind turbines to get to net zero by 2050 without bankrupting the country. He wants to build SMRs, or small modular reactors, which don't be fooled are just nuclear reactors, in place of coal-fired power stations. Says we could then use existing infrastructure, we wouldn't need to rewire the grid. Plus, has the added benefit of reducing the need for street lighting in the southwest because Collie will cast a warm glow far and wide. <laughs> Chris Bowen thinks that plan is the bureaucratic equivalent of a three-eyed fish. <gasps> and that at $387 billion, it's too expensive. It is a lot of money. Bowen cherry-picked the stats from a CSIRO report to bolster his financial argument, so it's a bit misleading. But the cost is irrelevant here because it's more about local politics. Where are you going to build these things? Not in my backyard. There will be a few co-workers in Collie who'll be willing to work for Monty Burns. Excellent. But the same people all own houses, and I don't know how many real estate agents will say that having this next door... <laughs> ...is going to be good for your property value. Makes sense in the pill, bro. Far, far away, so if something goes wrong, nobody gets hurt. As much. And the mining industry is a huge consumer of power, so there's a reliable customer base. But is a sector that's desperately trying to greenwash its way to respectability going to go nuclear? BHP's We're Not Raping the Planet marketing wank is a lot less appealing when it looks like this. So no uranium mining either? No, we should be mining uranium. 
Mark McGowan banned it as a sop to his party's hard left. Things have moved on since 2017. We've signed up to have nuclear submarines. It's pronounced nuclear. I know this because I watched a press conference with Joe Biden and some other guy. <laughs> that fell down under. Roger Cook's now saying it's okay to have nuclear subs based at Garden Island, but not okay to mine the uranium needed to power the same boats. Not even God could make sense of that. Quite frankly, I'm tired of it. I'm Ben Hutton. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.